And I remember thinking, you know what, God, I tried it your way. I tried doing it, you know, what society says I'm supposed to do, and it didn't work. I'm done with you. I'm done with my fellow man. I'm done with all this. I'm going back to what I know. And so my plan was to manufacture a large batch of meth, sell it, and uh, I, wanted, I was just going to go to California or something. <laughs> Drugs and alcohol for me started in early, you know, my early high school years, but there was always something a little bit more important to kind of outweigh it for me. Like, for example, football or, uh, you know, academics in high school were more important because I, I was good at those things and they were, they were kind of important to me. After athletics ended my senior year is whenever it really took a, took a dive. I started using meth heavily, started manufacturing meth heavily, and started distributing it. See, I did that for a while, and you know, everybody's either dead or going to prison. And uh, I said, "Man, I got to do something different," you know. And I was starting. I was trying to get clean, trying to get clean. And I ended up meeting a woman, got married. I wasn't living for God, but I wasn't using drugs. So in essence, I still had all the craziness going on in my brain, but I don't have the drugs to cope with it now. So in in, in a way, I was almost more miserable. You know, I mean, I was getting material things. I built a house, I had a daughter, things like that. Things that the world says you should be happy, but I was not happy. Whenever problems started coming in that relationship, then there's no more reason to stay sober. One thing led to another. She got a protective order. I got told I couldn't even go in the house that I built. I was in a spot where they said, you're either going to work for us, you're gonna die, or you're gonna go to prison for a very long time, and we don't care which one it is. And uh, I noticed one of the officers, his shirt said gang task force, and I thought, man, that's weird, I'm not in a gang. I was selling enough drugs to gang members that it got their attention, and that's why they were there. So they're saying, you know, you're gonna have to work for us, and at the time, I thought, man, if I go to jail right now, I've got so much other people's money in play, I'll get killed in jail. If I sit in jail, you know, if I tell them I'll work for them where I'm not in jail, I'm gonna get killed. I just didn't see any option. Somebody's gonna find out what's going on here and I don't know what to do. And I remember thinking, God, the only way I'm gonna get out of this alive, you're gonna have to help me in it. And it was shortly after that prayer, probably the next day, maybe a day after that, I got a phone call. And uh, I'll never forget, man. I answered that phone and the woman's voice on the other end sounded just, it just calmed me. And she was at 12 and 12 treatment center. She said, we have a bed for you in detox. And I checked in the detox. That was August 28th, 2016. That was the last day that I've had any mind or mood altering substance in my body. So, you know, I go through treatment, I get into transitional living where you, they expect you to have a job and I got this bright idea that I was going to start a company. <laughs> and uh, my brother-in-law, he, he used to mow lawns on the side and he's there and I'm like, hey, you know, you don't work during the day, you got a truck, you we want to make some extra money, we can, we can do this deal. It's winter, we can do leaves, man. And uh, I think just so I would shut up, he was like, I tell you what, if you can get some customers, I'll help you. And that was where it started and I was still living at 12 and 12 and one thing led to another and you know fast forward now we've got like three trucks, four trailers, you know all kinds of lawn equipment. We have real customers that pay us real money to do real services that are not illegal. I mean it's, it's a huge step from where I was man and I have people that work for me that this is the first time that, that they've ever done that you know. Every day we're learning that we can do new things you know. I mean I know for myself and a lot of the people that work for me they feel like when you're that little kid and your parents are like, you can do anything, you can be anything. I mean, we're really learning that and feeling that and learning how to do it without drugs and alcohol. Nobody thought that a junkie in my situation would be doing what I'm doing today. Uh, that's, statistics say that doesn't happen, you know. I'm supposed to be dead or in prison. <laughs> But I ain't dying anytime soon, man. <laughs>